Okay, in this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the second half of a paper two problem that has to do with two variable uh, statistics. So this, this goes over a lot of the di different things that you need to know for two variable stats, and it shows you how to use a, use a calculator and things like that. So pretty good problem. It says at the end of the year, only seven of the female science students sat examinations in science and French. The marks for these seven students are in the following table. Okay. Um, now, the first part of this was a chi-squared problem that I, I did chi-squared in another video, so you can check that out. Um, but So they're, they're going off that data. Now, let's see what we have here. It says draw, part A, says draw a labeled scatter diagram for this data. Use two centimeters to represent 10 marks for the x-axis and 10 marks for the y-axis. Okay, so the, they say the x-axis is going to be S right here and then the y-axis is going to be f. So they're not using x and y, they're using s and f, which is fine. Um, now, this anytime you see like a square box, like 5 by 5 like this, this is IB graph paper, that's that's equivalent to 1 centimeter. It's smaller because I shrunk it down. So basically, if two of these boxes is going to be 10, So which is nice because that's that's um, it's actually counting 10 spaces. So it will be really easy to plot the points. So what I'm going to do is just label 10 for each one. And I'm going to go up to 80 because the highest one is 73. Uh, this one, the highest one is 70. So, okay, so I'll just go, you know, 10, 20, uh, 30. It got a little cut off there. 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, so it worked out perfectly there. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start and I'm going to plot the points. Um, I'm not, you don't want to see me plot points. I mean, it's pretty easy. Like, I'll do the first one, 23, which is right here, up to 65. So 23, uh, 65 would be, you know, right here. Okay, so I'm going to plot these right now. Okay, so what you see there, um, after I've plotted all these points, is, you know, there's there's a negative correlation there. So um, that was the first point I plotted. Um, you know, it, it looks like the higher the science score, the lower the French score, which seems kind of interesting. Um, okay, so let's let's move on. It says, now use your graphics, graphic display calculator to find the mean of S and the mean of F. Okay, well, that that's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is go in... Uh, turn on our calculator, uh, clear clear it off. Um, now you just to enter in a list. You just go stat, and you go press enter. Now I have already entered in this list to say these both. This is um, this is S right here, and this is F right here. So I've already entered this in. They want us to find the mean. So what you do to find the mean of both of these is you go to stat, and then you go over to calculate. And we want two variable stats because we wanted to do them both at the same time. So we go stats. Now there's no frequency list because it's not a weighted average. We just want, you know, the stats for X and the stats for Y. Okay. So we're looking for the mean. Okay. So what do we got there? We got 49.9 for X and 47.3 for Y. Okay. That's great. Now if they want standard deviation or something like that, that's right here for X. The standard deviation for Y would be right here. Um, that's another common thing they ask for in in uh, in these types of problems, and it's not a big deal. You you can um, you know do it the exact same way. So this this problem doesn't happen to ask for that, but that's fine. So 49.9 and what was it? 47.3. Okay, so I'm gonna go right here, and 49.9 and 47.3. Okay, now they want you to plot M, which is basically the midpoint, on your scatter, uh, scatter diagram. Okay, so let's do that. 49.9 is almost 50, and then 47.3 would be just right up here. So I'm going to go, you know, with this point right here. And we'll just do M right there. Label it M. Okay, so now it says use your graphic display calculator to find the equation of the regression line of S on S. Okay, no problem. So we'll just go back to the calculator. We already have all, everything entered in. So again, we'll go back to stat. We'll go to calculate. And this time, instead of two variable stats, we'll just go down to linear regression. And that's going to give us um, L1, L2. It's good to enter your list in L1 and L2 because then you never have to change this stuff. Um, calculate. 
and we have AX plus B. So A is the slope and B is the y-intercept, or A is the gradient, B is the y-intercept. So negative 0.619 plus 78.2. Okay, so, you know, F is the y here. We've got to put it in terms of F and S. So F equals negative 0.619S plus 78.2. So that's our linear regression line right there. Okay, so uh, part E here says, now draw the regression line on the scatter diagram. Okay, so let me get a different color here. Um, what? Okay, so we have to draw this. Now, this is the y-intercept, 78.2. So what I would do is go up. Ooh, I don't have it quite. My graph's not quite big enough, so I'm just going to put it, like, right up here. Normally, you would have your graph right there, 78.2. It's fine. Um, I didn't make it high enough, but that's all right. So, you know, I'm running out of a room there. You go up a couple more spaces. So um, what you want to do is you want to make sure you draw a straight line that goes through M for your linear regression line. Okay, so this is going to be up at 78.2. Um, and then what you're going to want to do here is draw a straight line. Now, I'm doing this with a stencil. It's not going to be straight. Use a ruler um, on your test. Um, you know, I'm doing the best I can here. I, I can't use a ruler on a stencil. It's hard. So I've tried. Boom. Okay, so not too bad. Whatever. So there's your line of linear regression. And this should be up at 78.8. So, it, you know, it should be just a touch higher. But that's all right. It, you get the general point of, of what your regression line looks like there. Okay, and then for the last part of this, it says Carletta's mark on the science exam was 44. She did not sit the French exam. Estimate her mark for the French exam. Okay, well, that's what the whole point of the linear regression line is. You can estimate. So we're going to estimate her French exam by just plugging in 44 for S. So it's going to be negative 0 0.619 times 44 plus 78.2. Okay, so we will uh, break that out on a calculator, nice and easy. Uh, let's get out of here. So we do um, negative 0 0.619 times 44, and then we'll do plus 78.2. Okay, so 50.964. So that's basically that's 51 if you round properly. So you know, you're estimating that her score is 51. So, you know, let's see if that makes sense. If her, you know, science score is 44 right here, okay, what's her, you know, French score going to be? So 44, oh, 51, see, like it's perfect. It's right there. So and the, even though this line should be slightly steeper, I just could not fit this graph paper on there. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, I think you all get the point. Uh, so let's do the last problem here. Monica's mark on the science exam was 85. She did not sit the French exam. Her French teacher wants to use the regression line to estimate Monica's mark. Okay, well, 85 is right here. You know, if you were to estimate, it's 25. But the problem is, state whether the mark obtained from the regression line for Monica's French examination is reliable. Uh, it is not reliable in this case because... Um, 85 is outside the boundaries that we use to draw the regression line. Okay, so you, you want to be inside the regression line. Otherwise, you know, we, we need some other high scores because it, it may have flattened out the regression line if there's more high scores. So, I, I mean, if she got, you know, 100, you know, the regression line would predict she'd get like a 10 on the French exam, which is not necessarily reliable. So it's not reliable, and it's because um, 85... The science score is outside um, the bounds of the regression line. Okay. Um, now, you know that's that logic there is a you know a little I don't know a lot of kids probably wouldn't get that, but just you know just use your common sense. Look at how far this is going down. So if you use this equation and you put in like 90 or 95 it's going to have like a 5 or something so and and no one on the french no one scored below like a 30 on the french exam so you know this there's a limit to how good this data is 
um, especially with, with a finite thing such as taking the exams, because if you kept going on this, you know, eventually it would predict a negative result on your French exam, and you can't even do that. I mean, even the, you know, <laughs> I mean, if you don't do anything, you still get a zero, right? Okay, so anyway, um, I hope that helped you out. Um, that's some two variable stats for you um, with the scatter plot. You know, on your scatter plot, make sure it's neat. Um, you'll have a lot more paper than this. You make sure you use a ruler. You, they won't award any marks if you don't use a ruler, um, you know, for this line. So it's, it's really important. Um, and, you know, two variable stats. You know, you just go to stat and calc entering in your, your data, and, and you can get all this. And then from stat, you can also get the linear regression line. So anyway, I hope this helped you out. It's two, two variable stats. There you go. All right, uh, take it easy. Late.